please give us a bit of detail on your fund and how exactly it differs from other alternatives and mainstream products. I think the biggest thing that we pride ourselves in is that there's nothing glamorous about what we do. There's nothing that is superbly smart or innovative or out there. It's very simple building blocks that we're using to take incremental uh, bits of risk and turn the probability of that being a positive return uh, into something as high as possible. So if you want to use the analogy of someone batting in cricket at the crease, someone's going to hit a boundary every now and then, but the guy who goes in and tries to hit a boundary every time is most probably going to have a fairly short innings. Whereas the guy who goes out and takes the bread and butter run singles when they are given to them, um, and then if a boundary comes his way, so much the better. But there's no rush, don't get too greedy, keep it simple, make sure that your, your risk matrix is in order, and the rest will sort itself out. Our fund is very vanilla. We don't have any complicated option overlays, we, we don't have any credit plays, we basically use three bog standard instruments, which can be actually two, because the one's just the short end of the other. Government bonds, interest rate swaps, and FRAs. And FRAs represent the zero to two year portion of the swap curve. So they essentially could be thrown into the, the swap world bucket, although the pricing of FRAs is slightly different and they are a bit more volatile than with slightly longer swaps in terms of price behavior. The way we construct the portfolios is we have a look at the world, decide what we think interest rates globally are going to do, what uh, foreign exchange uh, currencies are going to do, how that uh, feeds into South Africa, take a broad brush macroeconomic sort of view on South Africa now, three months, six months, 12 months, and then start digging into a bit more of the detail. Largely with interest rate, interest rate instruments, the way you make money is you can take big bets on the movement of interest rates. It's risky because it's linear. And if you're wrong, well, you're wrong. If you're right, you're right. You can take views on the term structure of interest rates over time and yield curves really go from day one up to 30 years. And the interest rate for each term differs in, in the normal world. I've never ever seen a completely flat yield curve, but that doesn't mean to say it doesn't exist but I don't think you'll see it in South Africa anytime soon. Within that yield curve and the term structure of rates, you can take a view on how does it look today? If I bump that yield curve forward by three months, how does it look then? Six months, 12 months. And with each version, you'll start to see a difference in how that the yield curve looks to the eye. By doing that, we pick up any anomalies that may occur, because it won't be apparent in the spot curve, but it may well be apparent in the one-year forward curve. So for instance, a three-year, a one-year, three-year forward, uh, and relative to a one-year, five-year forward, might stand out as being too flat, too steep, and if you look at the curve today, it doesn't look like there's any problem with it whatsoever. So we dissect the curve, move it forward, bump it forward, and then start having a look for inefficiencies. Historically, we're mapping certain relationships over time uh, that have stood the test of time and will stand the test of time forever, which we then use in terms of trying to build our, our ideas into tradable ideas. Uh, so, for instance, if, um, if there is a one-year point on the yield curve, a three-year point and a five-year, and the three-year point starts trading at extreme discount, we can map it historically look at our forward break-evens of taking advantage of that anomaly and see what that translates to in terms of a tradable, uh, whether it's a tradable trade or an opportunity to walk away from. So we're doing this all day, every day, looking for the anomalies, looking for them to get to extremes and then taking advantage of it. Just going back to the point in terms of why these relationships will persist in interest rates, is that an interest rate is not like a share of a company. An interest rate has a maturity, equities don't. An interest rate has, um, in a bond it'll have a coupon. In a swap it'll have a fixed and a floating rate component. You can present value and forward value the cash flows of those two transactions using whichever interest rate you want. You can use interest rates as currently predicted and forecast by the market. 
you can bump that curve depending on what you think it's going to do and then have a look at the same outcome. But those relationships are fairly well tested and, and over time. They can get very extreme in, in certain instances due to a, a whole myriad of end users. But having looked at uh, the South African bond market like exclusively for the last 20 years or 25 years between the three of us, we're very comfortable with our models in terms of them determining what each distortion is going to uh, play out to be, how long it's going to take. And then obviously, as I said, we work through the break-evens in terms of if I'm holding the trade, does it cost me to hold the trade? Does it make money for me to hold the trade? And factoring that into the risk equation. For Acumen Capital, the single best trade that we can do is taking one anomaly on the bond curve and trading it against the direct opposite anomaly on the swap curve and having that trade pay us money to hold it over time. And you'll be surprised how often those situations present themselves, but you have to be looking for them. For us, the money is not in terms of saying, oh, 186s are going to go up in yield or down in yield. Yes, there can be an element of that within the portfolio. But I could be quite right on what I think short-term interest rates are going to do. And I can get term interest rates completely wrong due to either a political event or a um, global event, uh, any event really. So, you know, it's risk and reward. You want to take more risk, then you've got to hope that your reward is higher. And that's not always the case. Our, our whole mantra is to get the reward while reducing the risk as much as we possibly can. So really, we're like making widgets here. You know, we're like plumbers fixing broken uh, leaks, leaking pipes. It's not glamorous. It's not rocket science. But it's just discipline, patience, and um, it's, the, it's the long haul. You know, as long as we can do what we have been doing for our customers, then that keeps us in business. When, when we stop doing it, that will take us out of business, I guess. <laughs> Greg, thank you very much for your time and sharing detail on the fund and the firm. Pleasure. Thank you, Andrew. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details, you can find them on the website.